job. It's been described as a breakthrough treatment for children with autism. But until now, the power of play has never been put to a rigorous scientific test. Tonight, we show you the remarkable findings of a Canadian study and the extraordinary effect that play appears to have on children's lives. Ioana Romeliotis has this special report. <laughs> What do you see? His eyes are bright oh, and curious. Ah, boom! But what he sees can often oh, overwhelm him. Daddy. No, mommy! Five-year-old Tristan Scott has autism. No, daddy! No, mommy! Leave me alone! Oh, I hear you, Tristan. And it's why he's in this university research room doing something that seems very unscientific. He's playing. Okay. Mom, be back. His parents, Suzanne and Lincoln Scott, are learning how to play with him. We've learned. We've learned about that. We've learned to get down on the floor and, and play and try to get our imaginations going and um, learn to give and take. This is called floor time therapy, and as the name suggests, it's all about getting down to Tristan's level. To unlock what may seem elusive to an autistic child, an emotional connection. A desire to engage. I know. Let's play high and seek. <gasps> That's, That's a good game. Yeah. Tristan, look what the kids <laughs> Stuart Shanker and a team of researchers at York University have been tracking each exchange as part of a remarkable experiment into the power of play. That was a good job. What we wanted to know. When we looked at this, when we when we created this 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 institute to study this, is first of all, what's going on in the brain? What's going on with that social brain network? Can we actually can we actually bring that social brain network online? Can we get it cooking? Can we get these connections forming? The man who pioneered the therapy certainly believed it could. For decades, the late Stanley Greenspan, a world-renowned child psychiatrist, practiced floor time therapy, convinced it can prevent a child from becoming fully autistic. But it wasn't until researchers here at York University put it to the scientific test that anyone could actually prove how floor time therapy works, or even if it works. All children have this drive to want to interact socially. It's the essence of being human. But for the child with autism, there are biological challenges that make interaction painful, that make it um, unpleasant. So if we can figure out what those factors are and then reduce the unpleasantness, reduce the stresses, then the child will, in fact, naturally want to do this. To test that theory, Shanker and his colleagues recruited 51 families with children aged 2 to 5 with moderate to severe autism. Kids who would find everything too bright, too loud, just too much. God, me. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Half, like the Scots, took part in a weekly two-hour session of floor time therapy for a year. No duckies? You help me! And they had to do much more. They had to commit to at least 20 hours a week of floor time at home. It was exhausting. It was exhausting. I'd work, I'd try to get the hours in during the day, and he'd come home from working, and then we would switch off. A flight attendant, Suzanne Scott, cut back her hours and put her younger son, Xavier, in daycare for longer stints to devote the time to Tristan. You got it? Oh, are we going high up? How is this different from just playing with your child? Well, I had to learn how to play. Getting involved, letting him take the lead. It's okay. For Lincoln, I think a lot of it was slowing things down. So he tends to be, um, tends to easily, easily get hyper and, and want to do that rough and tumble boy play. And what we've all had to learn was to just quiet it down. So what are we watching in this video? We're watching a video of Tristan and his dad prior to starting therapy at York. To measure if the therapy was making a difference, all the children in the study were assessed before treatment. Tristan's team of therapists gave us a look. So it looks like Dad is trying hard to engage him. He is. Right? The stats are using a number of different ways to try and engage Tristan. He's 
using different playful sounds, different actions, and he is grabbing Tristan's attention for moments at a time, but it's not as sustained as we'd like to see, and it doesn't stick. In this video, we're not seeing much eye contact, so that's definitely something that we want to mm -hmm. see. We want to see him looking towards Dad. The kids were assessed again a year later. Daddy, you'll be the bad guy, Dad. I'm the bad guy? Yes. Here I come. Tristan's oh, social skills oh, improved no. dramatically. You need to go there. Over there? Okay. And no peeking. He's no. using language to ask questions, to direct, to comment on what he's doing, and even comment on what other people are doing, which is amazing. You see a lot of moments where they're really just enjoying each other. They're having a lot of fun together. Lots of positive changes, yeah. He's basically gone from a kid where he's basically wanting to be alone and of late opening up and letting us come in to play with him. And it's wonderful to hear him say, I got an idea. It's, un <laughs> it's just brings, brings everything. I'm choked up. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that we mean. The, the possibility of bringing the child into our social world so that the child becomes an active social agent, not a child who responds because we've conditioned him or trained him to respond, but a child who interacts because he wants to, because it's fun, and it's through that process that he will learn meaningful language, that he will learn um, social skills, that he will develop empathy for others because he will understand things like facial expressions, gestures, and so on. High five! Good job. Would you like to put on the octopus hat? What octopus hat? Our octopus hat. Where? This one. He's inquisitive with me and he's responding to my questions, which is, I think, a telltale sign that he's, he's responded to the treatment. Hold on. Yep. Neuroscientist Jim Steben also noticed how well Tristan was doing. But when he got his data Ready? back, the extraordinary results explained why. Like all the children in the study, Tristan's brain was scanned before and after treatment. What's most spectacular with Tristan is that in this other area called the amygdala, which processes emotions like fear and anxiety, before treatment, this area was very, very, very active. It was bright, very brightly lit up. After treatment, we could see that it was le about half as bright. Ready, steady, and go. Tristan's brain has actually rewired. The amygdala, the part that caused him to be anxious Good. and hyper, has calmed down. Okay. This is the frontal lobe. These are the... And the parts that help him tune in to social cues like people's expressions are now active. Much more activation um, post-treatment. And that's very important because this area is relevant for interpreting the meaning of faces. So his brain actually changed. His brain's changed, yes, dramatically. Uh, two, three-fold, we're finding activity changes in these areas. It's as if Tristan's social brain suddenly woke up. And remarkably, Stephen found most of the children in the study had similar changes to their brains. I would say it's amazing. I would say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the most remarkable findings I've ever come across in my, in my background as a scientist, that uh, we're seeing very robust changes in these children's brains as a result of treatment. Back at home, it's led to some incredible moments. One that we happen to witness. Xavier, here's how you do. This is the first time Tristan ventured to play with his brother on his own. Up, 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 the way! And each step takes him further. Tristan is now in a regular kindergarten classroom. Yep, he has an aid. Nice cutting. To help him navigate the social world he's just learning to embrace. When you see the changes, how do you feel? Oh, like I was telling Suzanne the other night, I, I find it sometimes hard to pat myself on the back knowing that it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning and we've got a long road to go. And maybe in 20, 25 years after he's finished university, then I'll be able to answer that for you. They are guarded. But mostly, they're optimistic. 
Did you have a good day? Yeah. Hi. Did you say bye to Wendy? Bye, Barney. Bye. See you Thursday. <laughs> you on Friday. It gives me a lot of hope that there's a place for him out there and that if, if we're able to continue on the same path that we're going down now and help him develop his interests and, and, and have a love for school and um, become an independent person, then he can really become a, a functioning part of society with his own role to play Mwah. and be able to pull away from us. And that's my big hope for him. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was so lovely. I, I was really touched by the father saying, finally, he's letting us in. That's so profound. Yeah, and, the, you know, the whole point of this therapy, Wendy, is to create that emotional connection with the child, not to teach them how to behave a certain way, which has its place, but what's really heartwarming about this approach is, is, the, is finding that connection in every child that they believe the researchers behind this approach really believe exists in every child. The question is, how do you get to it? Basically getting down on the floor and unlocking it and then building from there. So this is a huge breakthrough. It, it's big in the States already, this kind of uh, practice, right? But mm -hmm. what happens here now? Can parents get that for their kids? If they well, now it? that it's proven and the research is there, and that will have huge implications across the board, the, the expectation from the university's end is that parents will be calling them and saying, where can I bring my child to get this? So they are thinking of opening up a clinic. It's already in the works. It might be a year, maybe two before it actually happens, so it won't be soon, but it is coming. So they're expecting an onslaught. Absolutely. Well, a lot of excitement. Yeah, for and sure. it started here, or at least the, the science started here. Thank you so much, Joanna. You're Great welcome. story. Thank you.